friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. How are you doing? It is always, always so good to see you. <laughs> I know I can't see you, but you see me. And um, as we join together here at the rest stop, it is always my pleasure to join with you in reading the word of God. That's what we do. We read the word of God, we ponder, and then we rest and we stop and we ask the Lord to give us a refreshing wind, refreshment for our soul here at the rest stop. Yes, we take a sila. We take a little bit of a break. So um, as you can see, my background is a little different. I am here at the home headquarters of the Williams family. And so, yes, you can go home again. Uh, but that is really where we're gonna we're gonna find our focus today. So in our lectionary reading, we have um, it's the 14th week of ordinary time. Our lectionary reading, we have a lot of really great readings today, but I'm gonna read a familiar one that you've heard before. And um, here we go. It is Mark chapter six. It's verses one through thirteen, a very interesting, interesting passage of scripture. Um, that Jesus is teaching his disciples several things. Really, the main thing is how to deal with rejection. Um, I think that that's what comes out of this scripture. So here we are, Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. All right? When you have the word of God, say amen. Amen. Okay, so here we go. Um, he left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brothers of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, Shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, that's a, that's a really great passage of scripture. Jesus is teaching his disciples as they set out on the mission. They're on mission. They're on mission. He sends them out two by two. Isn't that familiar? Don't we remember something about two by two? <laughs> um, but he sends them out two by two, and he teaches them how to deal with a house that they come to and they're not welcomed. Really how to deal with rejection. And I find three movements in this passage, um, three movements, it's, it's one about, um, I don't know if it's in this particular order, but we see disbelief there, right? Because there's this, there's this whole aspect of their unbelief. It says that um, Jesus was, Let's see what it said. He could do no deed of power there. 
Um, he was amazed in, in verse six, and he was amazed at their unbelief, right? So we have disbelief, and then we have dishonor. Um, here we go. We're going to go dishonor first, then disbelief, because here it is. Um, the dishonor comes when Jesus is talking about a prophet. Uh, it says here in verse four, prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house, right? So there's dishonor, there's disbelief happening. And then the third movement here is the dispatch. He still sends them out. He sends them out and he sends them out with instruction, right? He called the 12, verse seven. He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two, gave them authority over the unclean spirit. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belt, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics, right? And then he said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. And if any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. There's something about that phrase, shake off the dust. When you look it up, um, it, it's, it's about rejection, but also there's another aspect of that phrase that means new beginnings. And here we are in the seventh month on the eighth day. I don't know what time of day that you will see this, um, if you'll see this even on the eighth day, but eight is the number of new beginnings. And that shaking off the dust is a time of new beginnings. And my friends, I want to say to you today, be encouraged that at any level of rejection in your own life, there is always a new beginning. And so um, what do we say? What do we say to the called, to those who are the ones who are moving forward in, in their ministry? Sometimes it happens when you go home, people don't really receive you in the way that you want them to receive you. Yeah, it happens. It happens to the best of us, right? So, so what do we do? You shake off the dust. It's time for now for new beginnings, right? I have a, I have a mother in the ministry and she has said to me, you know, if, if they don't give you the, the, the right hand of fellowship and give you the left foot, <laughs> left foot of fellowship, you know, you just keep it moving, right? So that's what we do. And that's what we find here, even in this text. We find in this text that um, Jesus is telling them to keep it. So you continue to progress, right? So that's for those who are the call. Now, for those on the other side of it, for so so we spoke to those who are rejected. Now we're going to speak to the ones who are the rejectors. Don't do it. <laughs> that's simple, right? Pause. Take consideration. Remember, there are some who have been elevated, and it's time now to respect that. Even if you know them from, from, you know, knee high to a grasshopper, as they say, you know, if you know them from when they were a tiny, tiny tot, you don't have the authority to, and my, my mother in ministry has, has said this also, um, to make what is holy common. Like, it is not, it, what God has set aside as holy, that's not your business. That's not your business. So to those who are the rejectors, you have to be careful. And so um, the, the message here at the end of this rejection is another word, right? Repent. So there's a message of repentance here. So, so all of us can take up that opportunity to repent. Those who are rejected, because sometimes when we're rejected, we carry things in our hearts that we don't want to carry. So we need to repent. And then those who are are dealing the blow, right, and then um, you, you have to repent as well. And so the message of repentance still goes forth, still goes forth with the disciples. And at the end of the day, we are all called to be disciples of Christ. We are all called to carry the message of Christ. And, um, and that's, that's my encouragement to you today, to continue to move forward and to carry the message of Christ, to carry the grace of God even in your state of rejection. It happens to the best of us. All of us have experienced it. it. Some of us have dealt it and some of us have felt it.
But at the same time, at the end of the day, we carry the grace of God, we keep it moving, and we ask the Lord to show us what our new beginning is to look like. Are you okay with that? Is that something good for you can take with you? All right, so let, let's rest and let's stop in that together. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for um, your word to the disciples in this passage. We thank you that we can still feast upon your word and we can still gain some instruction. Lord, we're not completely sure of all that took place, but we do know that there were many um, there who just saw you as Mary's son, just saw you as the brothers, the brother of Simon and Joseph and, and Judas and your sisters and and so Lord Jesus, they 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 were like, is this not the carpenter? We know that they want to keep you in 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 their little box, but Lord, help us. Even as you told this story to your disciples, help us to get the message that you want us to hear. Help us, Lord, you say, that he who has an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. So we pray that you would incline our ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us in this hour, um, to be mindful, to be careful of how we are to treat one another, period. And so, Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. We know that this is also a passage about faith because you told them to take nothing um, except their staff and sandals. And so, Lord, as we move forward, as we progress, I'm even reminded um, of, of the armor, the full armor of God. And so, Lord, we go forth with the sandals of peace. And we pray that peace would dwell in our hearts. Peace would be in our minds as we carry grace with us, even in the face of rejection. Lord, we are still uh, able to carry grace and gratitude in our hearts, knowing that you are with us. So we give you praise, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Our Father God, we thank you uh, for your Son, Jesus the Christ, Spirit of the living God. We thank you that you comfort us and that you continue to show us and teach us. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm telling you, I need to start silencing my phone. <laughs> Because it seems as though whenever I've been doing these rest stops for the last uh, couple of uh, rest stops, it has been ding, 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 dinging. But, uh, but I thank you all for joining me here at the rest stop. And I pray that as you go forth, that you would go forth in the love of the Lord, in the power of the Lord. Hey, listen, here's the other part. It said that he could do no deeds of power there except cure a few sick people. Listen. Uh, come on, if you were the sick person, that's good enough for me, <laughs> right? That's good enough for me, Lord Jesus. So we thank you that even still, there is still the work that goes forth from the power of God, right? It might not feel as though it's big power, but God is still able to do all things exceedingly abundantly, above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. So we give him praise and we give him glory. So I will see you all at the next rest stop. Bye. Bye.